Interesting, because I think you and I would both say that time should not be wasted, and there are great forces in Australia that seem to want to fiddle forever. But to go back to one of your quotes, you've left us in no doubt, though, that in your view, Z does seek to take Taiwan. His objective is to unravel a strategic order in Asia that was created after the Second World War, uh, and that he will, if necessary, use force uh, to achieve these aims. I take it that you're saying we bought a little time, we'd be very unwise to waste it. We, we would. Um, if, if you look at, for example, our military um, pr procurement, um, you know, a lot have been made of AUKUS, and I, I've been a very strong supporter of AUKUS. But AUKUS is mainly associated with nuclear submarines, which don't really come online for 10, 15 years. You know, we may not have 10, 15 years. Um, what we need to do, besides in addition to nuclear submarines, we need to invest in the sorts of things that will deter China over the next five years. So here I'm talking about so-called asymmetrical weapons, such as uh, land-based missiles, hypersonic missiles. Um, we need to invest in offensive cyber, which Australia is doing. We need to invest in unmanned vehicles and drones, which is and build those for Australia needs to do. We need to think about, you know, where to position our forces outside Australia in, in coordination with the Americans and Japanese and so on. So those sorts of things we need to do over the next five years. So yes, we might have bought ourselves some time, but we still need to do them. On the economic front, um, the COVID-19 pandemic began a process of diversification away from China. That now needs to be accelerated. Um, you know, we now need to factor in the real political risk um, of, of being so reliant on China. I mean, I, I speak these days to a lot of business executives who sort of understand the world's change, but I don't think they still understand the extent to which the world has changed. So I say to them, for example, um, there is an ever-increasing chance of a conflict in Taiwan or somewhere else with China. And if there is a conflict, regardless of the result, you will not be sending boatloads of iron ore to China during the war or after the war. You know, everything changes. So what I'm really trying to say is um, we need to prepare ourselves uh, for a world where we are, we are not so reliant on China that it would devastate our economy if something terrible like this were to occur. I couldn't agree more. One of the things that concerns me is that I think another sign of our tardiness in Australia has been that since the beginning of COVID, we've talked supply chain, supply chain, supply chain security, uh, and done little about it. And I remain to be convinced, for example, that we would have the energy reserves to keep anything going for long if, if trouble hit. Um, I, I, I am really concerned that the, at the lack of focus uh, and, and, and urgency that applies in far too much of the defence machinery and the bureaucratic planning in this country. We only have 13 Australian flagged ships, for example. That's all. Four of them are obsolete. They're about to be paid off. They're gas ships. We have no bulk tankers, uh, no tankers and no bulk carriers. And uh, as one um, very astute observer said to me the other day, running a defence policy uh, without a merchant marine is like trying to um, uh, run a Formula One car without wheels. What do you think? You've been a very astute observer for a long time of the Australian psych, the Australian political scene. What's missing in the equation when it comes to the necessary urgency across the nation? We're a democracy. It has to be ground-driven. We've got an election coming up. It's there. But there are a lot of people talking as though, well, we, we don't need to recognise that the next few years are urgent. I don't get it. Do you have any observations? I, I am just old enough to remember the 1980s. And, you know, most, I, I, I'm in my mid-40s, but if you're younger than that, we haven't lived through a real recession. I don't really count the COVID recession. We haven't lived through a real recession for about 30 years. Um, we, you know, we have all these debates about energy security or, or fiscal responsibility, all those sorts of things, but everything seems to keep on going as normal. So nothing really changes. So you have this attitude, both in the political class, but also amongst voters, that it doesn't really matter what you do. Everything's sort of going to be okay. You know, we, we haven't experienced uh, war 
for, for decades, at least not. not we, we've sent troops to far off places like Afghanistan. We haven't really experienced war that has affected the homeland in any way. Um, the point I'm trying to make is I don't wish it on our country, but we haven't experienced any kind of material hardship over, over at least three decades. And, and that creates a certain kind of complacency, which is very difficult to overcome. Just on the issue of energy itself, you know, we... Um, the debates that we have in Australia about energy mix, climate change, I mean, we could have found ourselves in a situation like Germany found themselves, where Germany closed down their nuclear power plants, or they phased them out. They dramatically de- uh, closed down their domestic sources of fossil fuels. But what, what, what do they do in return? They basically import gas and oil from Russia, yes. putting them in an extremely vulnerable position. Um, they run the myth that they are a renewables country when all it really means is they rely on uh, imports from other countries. So fossil fuels, they just don't really do anything themselves. Um, they make a show and dance of, of um, being good climate citizens in terms of the renewable statistics or whatever the case may be. The point I'm trying to make is that when reality hits, which Germany is finding now, you know, they're now trying to diversify their sources. They know the solution for them isn't more renewables. It's to find more gas from somewhere else. So, you know, it, it's only until uh, hardship and, God forbid, disaster hits that I think you populations and governments tend to take a, a real hard, proper look at what they really do to secure themselves. Uh, so right now, Australia is still at the phase where we are having, you know, somewhat unreal discussions about our climate change targets and renewable targets and all those sorts of things. Uh, there's no real reference to what it is we need in our future and what is realistic and how do we continue our, our, our way of life. Uh, unfortunately, I think we, we need some kind of shock to the system until, until we have that. That conversation doesn't really change.